Well, we do have one member of the public here as an observer. And I don't know whether she would like to. Would you like to say anything, Alan? You don't have to. <laughs> no, I will. No, okay. Yeah, my name is Anne Coakley. I live in Longmont. Uh, and Ronnie asked me to attend the meeting to see what it was about. <laughs> so I'm happy to be here. Good. Well, and I am going to apply, I'm sure, for the, for the board. Yeah. How, how many board members do you need? Three. Three? Okay, I'll apply. Good. <laughs> Thank you. Next is old business. And there's just one item on the agenda at this point, which is an update on the Northern Arapaho Elder Exchange. Um, Ronnie, who attended that meeting, uh, is going to update the board on the success of the mission. Absolutely. I was going to see if we can start with uh, uh, new business. Okay. So that way Amy could present. Um, do her part and then we can um, excuse her right after so she doesn't yes. have to sit and everything if that's okay. Absolutely fine, I'm not sure. Thank you. <laughs> Amy, please go ahead. Yeah, I'm Amy Fion. I'm one of the three resource specialists here on staff. Um, the other two are Veronica and uh, Melissa. Um, and uh, what we do is we provide uh, information and referral. Um, system navigation and a little bit of case management to seniors and caregivers of seniors here in the community. Um, and so that's kind of a broad, kind of all-encompassing um, definition of what we do. Um, we do a lot of um, helping with finding housing and uh, letting people know what housing is available for seniors um, and sitting down and talking about uh, financial situations of um, assistance if they're um, needing help with budgeting or looking at uh, help with paying for hearing aids, eyeglasses, um, dentures. Uh, Medicare is getting better, but unfortunately it doesn't like to cover much on your face. Um, so for that reason, there's grants in the community that we help look into to see how someone can get assistance with that. Amy, do you also direct them to Medicaid if they qualify? We do, and we actually do a lot of Medicaid assistance um, and helping understand Medicaid. Um, because Medicaid just isn't one program, and I think a lot of individuals assume it is one program. Um, so looking at the different types of Medicaid, um, the income limits and the asset limits, um, and then also trying to advocate um, for information to be up to date. I actually had someone call me yesterday because the three different websites for the state and the county, um, and there was one other one, all have different income limits for the same program. Oh. So helping navigate that and try to figure out what's the actual right answer so that when you go to look up something, um, you're able to know if you qualify or not. Um, and then we do help with the application for Medicaid, food assistance, and some of those other public assistance programs. Um, we help look at different rebates that are available for seniors in the community and try to get out word about the different programs. Um, TABOR was a big one in the last few years because seniors were eligible for TABOR but didn't necessarily know that um, or know that they had to do a tax return to get it. Because um, a lot of seniors, if you're on a fixed income, you don't necessarily need to do a tax return. Um, so that's something we try to get information out um, around resources and staying up to date on what the resources are because they're ever changing. Um, I've been here with the city about nine years now. Veronica's going on year 20. <laughs> and then Melissa, she joined us during the pandemic. So I think it's gone so fast. I think she's actually been here almost five. Um, we're getting close to that. Um, and then Veronica and Melissa are both bilingual Spanish speakers. Um, so they meet with our monolingual Spanish-speaking population and do a lot of outreach in that area. Um, Veronica has a program called Regalo de Paz, which is uh, the Advanced Directives and End-of-Life Planning in Spanish. Um, 
And then I, uh, I run a money management program. So it's uh, volunteers that meet with seniors one-on-one -on -one, um, and help them go through their mail, sort through what are bills, what are not bills, <coughs> create a budget, and then just have guidance around um, following that budget for a month. I think we can share. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, you're okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I apologize. Um, so that's kind of a over overview summary. We did have another resource specialist at the Longmont Housing Authority specific <laughs> properties um, that was actually a position through Longmont Housing Authority uh, but supervised under uh, senior services. Um, that one is vacant right now and we're um, kind of re-looking at that now but hopefully we'll have another our fourth resource specialist back in the new year. Um, so that's a uh, quick summary. I could probably talk for hours if you let me, so I'm going <laughs> to pause and see if you have any questions around what we do or um, any specific questions. What, what do you think is the most common question that comes up with your clients? What's the, the biggest problem? So um, housing is a really big one. Uh, and not yeah. just housing, but affordable, available housing. Um, we're really lucky to have Longmont Housing Authority. Their portfolio is about 80% senior housing, um, and that those are all affordable options. Um, but it, it's just a real struggle when the cost of living is going up greater than what your increase is. Um, and if you're on a fixed income from Social Security, um, and you've been renting somewhere for 20 years, and they're hiking up the rent, um, we've had a lot of uh, more immediate housing needs than what's available. And so we help try to brainstorm, navigate, figure out, do you have family, do you have friends? Um, what are some temporary situations that are available to you? While we work on the long-term, getting on wait lists, um, looking at what other options are available. Um, we don't do emergency services, um, so we're really looking at the long-term. Unfortunately, our appointments are looking out about a month right now. so. Um, and we try, we try to see as many people as we can, but what we found is uh, squeezing eight people in in a day doesn't leave room for follow-up for the people we did see. So sometimes providing customer services, asking to wait until we can fully get our service that we need. So that's, a, that's one. Um, the other one we're seeing a huge increase in is individuals needing help applying for Social Security. Um, and we do help um, with the actual application for Social Security um, if they need help applying online. Uh, we can uh, help make that My Social Security account and then go through the online application with uh, folks. We also help call Social Security if you need help calling to get an appointment or just need help navigating what questions to ask when you get a hold of a Social Security representative. So that's probably a, a newer one that we've seen quite an increase. So. And why do you think? Are there more people reaching Social Security age now? Well, it's just an increase in the number. Yeah, yep. So I think there's a, um, an exponential increase in the number of people retiring and getting to that age where they can draw Social Security. Um, it's also a pretty complicated uh, website um, it, in the sense of it's, it's very secure. So secure, sometimes you yourself can't get in. Um, and so just having someone that knows how to navigate um, and get that set up, um, folks like that service. Um, and Social Security is really um, encouraging folks to do it online versus making an in-person appointment or do it by phone, um, just because it gets processed quicker if you do it that way. So it's great we can be that support and help so you don't have to wait three months or two months to get an appointment. <coughs> so I have a question. Yeah. I had a senior approach me this week in regard to the fact that sometime though they had dropped a Part B from their Medicare mm. and he was not having much luck navigating the, the website. And I said, well, try the senior center so you can get over there. And then they, of course it's the, you know, you have to make an appointment and it's probably four weeks out. So how do we help him? So I would actually have him talk with the Medicare counselors here in Boulder County. At the um, AAA. Yeah, so we do 
a little bit of the base Medicare um, and how Medicare works with Medicaid, but when it gets into uh, um, issues with Medicare or Medicare supplements, <coughs> um, we partner with the AAA because they have um, actually trained Medicare counselors um, that uh, just know that way better than us. That's their expertise. So that's where I would start with that, that gentleman. Okay. Um, do, they, do they have a waiting list and how soon can somebody Usually it happens pretty fast. Yeah, yeah, so they are entering open enrollment, so their wait time is going to be a little bit longer. Um, but um, they do return calls and at least can talk to them over the phone and give them guidance. Um, I would say within a week they'll at least talk to them and figure out initially what, what steps they should do. Amy, isn't there a class here too? Yes, yep, so they offer the Medicare Basics class, but for that case specifically, um, it's that class is more a general overview and it's really great for folks to take that first to understand it and then the medicare counselors meet with individuals one-on-one -on -one to give them um, more of a um, situation by situation or your specific case and when is that class so we do that one monthly okay uh, not necessarily no so boulder county did move everything online yeah. during the pandemic so we only had one class here, I think, in this catalog. So it's like once the catalog here, but they have them online more regularly. Yeah, so I think online options are once or twice a month, but then the actual in-person ones are more infrequent. Do they have a Spanish-speaking person there? That yes, they, they do. Great, yep, they yeah. have a Spanish-speaking, her name's Karen. Um, okay. And uh, she was out for a while, so they're using the Spanish line, but I believe she's back now. Good. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. Any other questions? I guess somebody else will be, whoever called me to order can go ahead and continue. They're handing it off to you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you <go. laughs> Any other comments, questions? You Sorry. guys do a great job. Yes. We do. Thank you. You have a wonderful service for the community. And it's one of those things a lot of people don't know about us until right. they need us. Yeah. Um, and so having you all familiar with us helps because, uh, like, like you running into someone needing assistance, now you know where to direct them. And if you don't know where to direct them, we're a really good first stop. Because even if we don't do the service, we can talk to them and brainstorm and say, this is really where you need to go and where to start. Um, because we understand the systems and um, who does what. So I brought these little wrap cards that we have um, that have what we do and what we help with and then also our information. Um, and in case you need a reference of what we look like, they put our pictures on there too. Um, so these are helpful. I just brought a stack of them if you want to have a few. Yeah, I got one. Oh. <laughs> so if you want to pass them around, don't feel yes. obligated to take one, but I thought it would be helpful. Well, that's, that's very informative. Yeah. When come up. So, and Kaylee's not on there yet. Or she, oh, no, she is on there. Those are the she new is. ones. We're trying to get rid of all of our old ones that didn't have Katie, our um, counselor. I'm sorry I was a little late today, but uh, okay. what is your wait time on employment on night? So right now, it's a, they're about a month. Out. About a month? So yeah. it's better than what it was. It was there for a while, it's a little longer now. Yeah, so it kind of ebbs and flows. Uh, uh, we tend to, through the seasons in the summer, it tends to be shorter for some reason. Um, in the fall, we start to kind of book out a little bit further. And then in Christmas time, it kind of gets a little less, and January, it normally snowballs, and that's when it gets really long. That's what so, <laughs> so, okay. so that's kind of the, what I've seen throughout the years. All right, I want to conclude with what was said earlier. Appreciate you for what you do for our community, for our seniors. Absolutely. Really a great service. Yeah. Well, thank you for being our voices out there. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? If not, Okay, well, thank you for thank coming you. in. We appreciate it. Thanks, Amy. Thank you. I'll see you around the senior center. <laughs> All right. And it looks, uh, folks, I was working and I saw the clock at about 10 20, and a group of people came into Santiago and before I turned around, it was 10 o'clock. I said, oh, <laughs> late. So I apologize. Well, I appreciate we, it. We just sat here and stared at each other. Yeah. Oh, <laughs>
<laughs> That's better than waiting to come in and make everybody stare at me. <laughs> okay, it looks like we're on uh, board updates. Am I correct? Uh, no, we're, we are actually need to go yeah. back to A. We want to go back to A? Yeah. Okay. We skipped old business yes. so that Amy could talk. Yeah. Oh, okay. So we approve all the agenda? No, we've we gone. We're, we're so at we 5A. 5A. Yep. Updates on Northern Arapaho Elder Exchange. So I'll, you? Yep. So I'll talk about that and then kind of, Sheila, if that's okay in the back end, then I'll have you jump in and share your, sure. your experience and takeaways. And so, uh, as mentioned, we've been doing some work with the Northern Arapaho to, to uh, develop and create an elder exchange for, um, for us here at the Senior Center, providing some of our um, patrons an opportunity to 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 have well I'll say cultural enrichment opportunities that we've never offered here um, in person hands-on right and so we've been working with sister cities um, to make that introduction uh, establish a relationship and now we're continuing to build that relationship so this 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 trip we just went on uh, in September was to continue building that relationship and opportunity for our leadership to connect with their leadership. So I, um, leading up to that, we had the Little by Little Sisters uh, video presented here at the Senior Center for our advisory board members and our, and our friends board members. And um, some of our staff too participated in that to just to get some background knowledge of our Northern Arapaho friends and who they are and what work has already been established by sister cities and with our previous mayor and council members um, as well. So, so collected, presented that video, uh, Friends Board approved some funds for us to take a leadership group compiled of our advisory board, Friends Board, and some of our staff to go up to Wyoming. So to those who are able to participate uh, from our advisory board is, is Sheila was able to go. From our friends board, we took Ray Ramirez, um, we took um, Brenda, and we were able to take another staff member, or city staff member, uh, Carmen Palacios Ramirez, um, who's Ray's wife, but has been doing this work since it first started with Sister Cities. And um, from our from our team here at the Senior Center, I went, uh, Brandy went, and uh, Robin, I'm sorry, it's Robin. <laughs> <laughs> Bianca, <laughs> Bianca went. Um, I'd love to have taken you. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so we went up on a Friday morning. Went up on a Friday morning. Um, got up there in the. Got up in there. Got got up to Casper late afternoon. Got got settled in, and then went to the horse races. So uh, our Northern Arapaho friends are hosting the national horse racing championships in Casper, Wyoming. So they invited us up there to share their culture, something that they're very, very proud of and being able to um, host the, the national championship is a big deal. And they'll say it's a, it's a, it's a worldwide competition because there were some, some tribes from, from um, Canada in attendance. So they'll say, yeah. So, those, so, those <laughs> yeah. so um, again, the invitation was sent to us uh, to again continue building that friendship, but to share something that's very very important to their culture, and so we've never experienced that. So that alone <coughs> was very eye opening. It was um, if you've yes. never seen it, uh, I will send a link after this video or a video link after this meeting. Um, it's it's pretty intense. Um, there's a group of each each tribe has one rider, but they have three horses. All competitors get as, get as close to the front of the starting line as possible, then they'll sound a horn. They have to jump on the horse bareback, ride around once. Uh, as soon as they make it around the la a lap around the track, they pull over to their team, get off one horse, get on another horse, and go again. And they do that three times till, till, um, till the race is over. But how fast they move, how much training that goes into it, the fact that it's bareback, um, and there's so many unpredictable factors on these three different horses, right? And it depends on what mood they're in. <laughs> and people were being thrown off the horses, the horses are going opposite directions. Um, some people whose job is to stop the horse uh, so the racer can get off to get on the next horse. 
get run over. So it was, it was <laughs> wow. It's pretty intense. And, and the, yeah. you know, the leader yeah. that comes in first on that first round, he can have some sort of upset. And so the guy who is third or fourth does a good changeover and off he goes. Yeah. And takes the lead. So it's, <laughs> it's all very, it's very you know, really thrilling. <laughs> yes. And you would think that we had some stake in the game, how much we were cheering. And, <laughs> <of course. laughs> um, and um, it was just, and it is a really eye opening again, the cultural mm -hmm. enrichment opportunities to experience something different that we are used to. Uh, you know, and, and we, we were able to see why they were so proud of not only this event and this competition, but hosting the national championships. I may have missed this, but did they introduce you guys? Not yet. No, no, no. no. At the rodeo? No. They I just not. wondered if they talked yeah. about the exchange. Yeah, they did not. Um, I mean, it's, it's a big event, and it's it's very fast-paced. Uh, if anybody's ever been to a high school track meet, it's very similar to that, but much faster. So as soon as one race ends, they're getting all the horses off. I mean, each each group has three, three different horses. They get everybody off, and the next group is right behind them coming in. So it's like a track meet, but way faster. <laughs> so is anyone invited to attend, or is it just the Arapahoes? Anybody. So there's people from all over. So when we were uh, kind of um, having conversations with people in different various lines that we were in, you know, there's people from all over. And we saw, we heard of someone from Oregon uh, came down to these oh. events. And I mean, a lot of people in Wyoming. Um, so it's in their you don't have to be Native American. No, no. Is this a yearly event? Yes, yes. So are you prepared for next time or not? <laughs> Ride the next horses? Time, right? I mean, I'm ready to start my training. I told my daughters I'm going to have them I show them videos. I'm like, yeah, you start learning how to do this starting with our dogs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so, and so, um, so we were able to see again what they were very, very proud of and why they offered and extended that offer for us to go up there. And um, then they hosted us that Friday night. They hosted a dinner for us, which was outside. It's a dinner they host for all racers, all participants, all teams. And they invited us to be a part of that dinner as well. And so even, even going into this entire trip, I let everybody know there's no formalities in place. We are not going to come to a room like this that we have here at the Senior Center, sit at a table and have formal discussions. Anything related to um, uh, an elder exchange is going to be very, very unstructured. And um, I wanted to prepare everybody for that so there, there's no expectation of this type of formality. Uh, it's very, very informal. Everything, all the planning that's taken place so far and you know their comfort level is operating in these informal environments. And so we were able to sit down, grab some dinner, and um, we had Steven, I believe, I could be wrong, but I feel like his last name is Fast Horse, uh, sat at our table with us. We talked with him about this idea, and it was his first time hearing this, and his excitement level was off the roof. Uh, it, just knowing what this could bring for, for, for their community and our community, and collectively coming together. And we were brainstorming ideas. He was sharing his ideas of what this should look like, giving us feedback of we should take these things, certain things into consideration. Um, and he volunteered to be be first in line to come down here when this exchange takes place. Once he found out it was for 55 and older adults, he said, oh, I'm in that range. Include me. Because he, he, he asked how many people were, we were anticipating um, being a part of this. And we said, a low number. So around five, six. And he said, nope, do 10. And uh, <laughs> so he, he, he threw that number out there. And he said, including myself, nine other people. So again, he's thrown himself to be part of this first group to come down. <laughs> I didn't realize there are two senior centers on the reservation. Right. Yep. So he's telling us there's two locations. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so that was, there was that informal conversation started getting your started generating ideas between our group and and um, a couple of their representatives as well taking us into the next day the day two of races um, and, and I'm sorry leading up to that we were able to make some introductions uh, with uh, with their leadership again informally they, they welcomed us nice out the door gave us our tickets showed us where our seats were but they're very busy putting on this event and so we were able to meet uh, Lee who's part of their business council uh, Brendan, who's also part of their business council, and then some um, some uh, members of their tribe as well. Um, we met Jackie, we met Kimberly, and um, mm -hmm. and Stephen, 
And so that was important for me to make those connections, again, because it's so fast-paced and moving, but making sure that we were able to make those connections day one. And I'm sure Sheila will talk about it here in a bit, but um, <coughs> just just the way those introductions take place, right? It's They feel a part of the family, and everybody greets us with hugs. Oh. Hugs well, everyone. I'm going to say so many. Yeah. I've so. experienced so many hugs in my life. Right. And they were, were, they were actually like what I could call California hugs. Yeah. You know, it was heartfelt, so good to meet you, so good to see you, and so good to hear what we plan to do. It was, it was very, very impressive. It was, and that moved us into day two, where we woke up that next day, no one knew what to expect, excited to get to the racetracks and cheering, cheering everybody on again. Like I said, you would think that we had to stick in the game the way everybody was cheering. Um, it's so easy to get wrapped up in that excitement and, and, and their culture. And um, after day two of the races concluded, they invited us, our, our leadership, to go meet with their leadership um, in the section they were sitting at. And from there, again, very informal. It was, we're not sitting at a table, we didn't even sit down. We all stood in, in a giant circle and talked for about a half hour. And from there, it was very specific, like, all right, we got everybody together. What are we envisioning for this? What are our next steps? Basically, identifying those next steps. So we know they're coming down in March for the Denver March powwow. And so we, we were discussing an opportunity for them to come down a couple of days earlier. So the Denver March powwow takes, we don't know the exact dates yet, but it will always take place on a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Friday evening, all day Saturday, all day Sunday. So through these discussions, we're, we um, collectively thought it would be great for, for them to come down a, a little bit early. And we haven't cleaned this up if it's gonna be Wednesday, come down Wednesday, and then we'll have Wednesday, Thursday, and then they're off Friday. But it more sounds, sounds more like we'll have them Thursday but they'll come down um, Thursday, all day Thursday, half day Friday as they go into their, um, their, their event Friday evening. And with that time frame, we were kind of discussing what could we use this time, um, or how could we best use this time. And, you know, their leadership will be present, um, their, their elders will be present, and we would look at doing the same, having our leadership and our elders available for, for this interaction and this opportunity to connect. You know, we discussed how it would be a good idea for them to tour Longmont. They always just pass through. If they ever come through um, it, through Longmont for a specific meeting or event, and so that's the only place they go to. So an opportunity to tour the city, uh, share things that we're proud of as a community here in Longmont, um, and an opportunity to, to do some sort of um, cultural enrichment opportunity for our community. So we don't know what that'll look like. Maybe Q&A here. Maybe some sort of presentation here, um, you know, since they are coming down to Denver for the presentation, <coughs> maybe open to doing something here at the senior center. Um, um, there was there was discussions around an opportunity to share different various artworks. So, some 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 of their artwork that they that that's big in their, I'm sorry, you know, uh, yeah, big in their culture, sharing with our seniors and an opportunity for our seniors to share that as well. Um, you know, I obviously am in mean, a day and a half. I anticipate there being a meal in there somewhere, an opportunity for us to all, all sit down and, and share a meal together. Uh, our elders, their elders, our leadership, their leadership, and again, continuing to build that 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 community, uh, establishing that trust and building on our, our relationship. And um, I keep telling everybody, it's this it's it's a slow. It's going to be a slow process between these various uh, opportunities to connect before we get something nailed down. And again, that speaks to their culture as well. We need to continue to develop that trust and that relationship before we set anything in stone of an exchange. So Ronnie, I'm assuming you are the coordinator for the exchange? Yes. Okay. Yes. That'll be me, 100%. And do you interface with the other two sister cities? coordinators as well so to see what they've been through for our sister cities or the our sister cities so I've been so Janice is their our, our um, sister cities coordinator and director here in Longmont and so she was a part of that trip as well okay and so when I was invited in May to go be a part of that uh, that trip with Mayor Peck council members 
and uh, Sister Cities representatives, which Janice was there as well, um, she's been moving me in to help make these connections and establish this relationship. So she would be a part of this, cool. this work as well. Mm -hmm. So laying the groundwork in anticipation for that March um, meeting, opportunity to connect. Um, Friends Board months ago suggested an opportunity to do a, a cultural CDP here, cultural enrichment um, program here in the um, in, in our gymnasium around that video, that Sister Cities video that we showed to our, our, our advisory board and Friends Board. Um, so have show that video and have an opportunity for a, a Q&A as well. You know, I'm envisioning, so I'm working on this one right now for December, but I'm envisioning Carmen uh, Placio, uh, Placios Ramirez, as well as Ray Ramirez, um, Janice from Sister Cities. Um, you know, I'll see if Mayor Peck is available and willing to come be a part of this as well, or some of the council members who, uh, who've been part of this work as well. So an opportunity to answer some questions of what has, what, what this work has looked like in, in, in the past to get us to where we're at here you know, currently in our present and where do we envision this going, right? And I also think, um, why are we doing this? Hmm. Because there was a little bit of resistance from the Friends Board, would you agree? Yes. yes. Um, not, well, what's this got to do with Longmont and the Senior Centre? Um, and having done this experience, I think it's it's very, it's going to be a very important experience for the seniors in Longmont at the Senior Centre to get a, a good understanding and a, a, a good feel for the other. And it's the people who will be coming to Longmont will be able to see that we don't want anything from them except openness and friendship because their history has been well whenever we meet the white man he wants something from us or promises something and then doesn't come through and i think to have um, an open relationship of trust between the two communities will do so much good and a basis for going up going ahead and yes where is it that i've heard the um is it the city council or the mayor that reads the proclamation about the sister cities at events now yeah it's about, yeah there, there's what is that called about i've been to yes. events where yeah, it's land been acknowledged. Yes. land acknowledgement yes. thank you mm -hmm. and that um, can that be found online? Mm -hmm. I'm sure it can. Yeah. But the thing is, so you, know, you sit there before the performance starts and the meeting starts and listen to this. Do they know about the fact that we are incorporating the land acknowledgement in our I don't, I community? Don't know. I, don't know. I think that's just an amazing thing. It is an amazing thing, but there's a big but. You know, so what goes from there? Yeah. It's all very well. I, I hate to say lip service, but it's lip service to make us feel better, frankly. I mean, it does make us feel better. But then, what's the next step after saying, you know, I'm very sorry we took your land? So, well, well that acknowledgement is huge. Mm -hmm. It yeah. is huge, but it needs to be built on that. I think that's what's right. going to happen. Yes. Do this work. Hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah. How many people actually up? attended yeah. this? From from our no group? total that were at this. Oh, event. there was a. I mean, yeah. in the, the races. There's a, there's a full dozens, crowd. hundreds. I would say several thousands. Not thousands. Oh, oh wow. really? And oh, that's, yeah. I would say each day, thousands each Whoa. day. Whoa. Yeah. Now is this is not a gambling event. No. No, it's just a. Well, no. Yeah. We don't know yes. if it is or is it. <laughs> okay, good, 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 good. There's, there's no place to go. Okay. Okay. It's, 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 it's representatives from each tribe competing against one another. I don't mean to be repetitious because I think I've asked about this before, but is that video available to email? Yep. Can you email can it to the board? Absolutely. Yeah, that would, that'd be great. Thank you. And so um, 
working on that CEP in December, that opportunity, we're, we're nailing down those details for December CEP. And then as we approach March, when uh, cultural enrichment program. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And so um, as we get closer to March, uh, we found a time in March that we're working on to see if we can get uh, a professor um, from one of our local universities nearby or even Front Range um, who, who's, who, who specializes in, in um, Colorado history and be able to come and do a CEP here about life for our, our indigenous people, our Native American uh, families uh, here in the Front Range and what it looked like here in Colorado leading up to the, the Sand Creek Massacre where they were forced off of um, the land here in the Front Range and, and relocated. So, um, you know, for me, I'm going to go to my own personal history. You know, when I was in college, or my first, I remember my first semester had to take an elective. And for me, when I was going through my list of electives, it was easy. Like, oh, I'll do Colorado history. I've already been studying that, you know, since middle school. And they started off with the mis right out the gate, what life was like for people of color um, here in Colorado. Um, with an emphasis, heavy emphasis on our uh, Native American um, treatment here in Colorado, and then started unpacking their history. And for me, it was eye opening. It was just like, holy cow. I mean, I lived in Colorado my whole life. We've studied Colorado history our whole life, education, the education system in Colorado, and never even heard of this stuff. Right? Why, are the, why are we not taught about this? Right? So if it was that eye opening for me, I think it's very important for our community to have those same oper learning opportunities um, um, as, as I did as we continue to do this work. And weeks or probably at that point, weeks later, welcome our Northern Apple friends here to Longmont. So it's part to have that background knowledge as well. So do you working on those pieces. Children, do your girls uh, extend their Colorado um, history? They learn from. I mean, has has it changed with with, with in, the Sand Creek in the educational systems now? No, but at home, yes. Yeah. Um, you know, provide them factual yeah. history, factual information for their own personal knowledge and awareness yeah. as well. So we 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 celebrate Native American culture. You know, every time there's a new sort of celebrations in Colorado, we like to attend those. And mm -hmm. the girls are um, a big part of that and love to be a part of that mm -hmm. as well. So. Part for them to know the truth. Yeah. Hey, uh, I talked to Ray yesterday, and he had commended you and this guy for all you did in coordinating this and making this happen. Yeah, I think it was a big thing, and a I, lot bigger than we didn't realize it was. Right. And, I, and I appreciate him. And I'm small potatoes compared to him and Carmen, yeah. who have who have been doing this work from the very, very, very beginning, and you know, which has allowed us to have this opportunity right. to have this discussion to introduce something new. For, for as new as an elder exchange, right? So, you know, me being able to coordinate a band and get a group together, to me, that's that's the easy stuff. You know, the groundwork that they've laid um, is, it speaks volumes of who they are as people and just how much, and how compassionate they are, right? And so it's, and, I, and I've told anybody who'll listen, just like, that was the easy part, getting everyone together, but seeing Ray and Carmen interact with our Northern Arapaho friends and see the trust and relationship that has been established is incredible and how much they, they love them both ways and just just being able to see that on the outside is like wow they have done a lot of work to get in, to, 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 to be in the position they are you know, so well, it's going to be great and hopefully most of us will be able to attend yeah in March and absolutely yeah. cool. so, I'm sorry, it talked a lot. Do you want to share your experience? I don't know if you brought your, your report that thing. No, I, I will send the report. The report. I'm sorry? I, will send, I wrote a report on, on the trip for the Friends Board. Oh. And I don't know why I didn't send it to members of this board, so I'm going to send that. Okay. And one thing is that I, um, you alluded to, I had expected there would be a few these sort of meetings and uh, well is this going to really accomplish something and when I look back yes it did accomplish because a different culture has a different way of getting making decisions and getting 
plans together. So it was, that was another eye opener for me. Yes. I'm, I'm, when I was writing Arapaho in my notes that I take, it said that it was spelt wrong. And I think that the agenda has it spelt incorrectly. No E. And I'm, I think that's a really important start mm -hmm. in understanding their culture is to make sure that we do not include an E. No, you no E. Oh, it was dead. Mine, mine auto-corrected. Yeah, there's no. There's so no anyway, e. I just, I, I, <laughs> And I just wanted to mention that, that if we're going to be interfacing with yeah. a culture, we need to know how to smell it. There's, there's no way to do this. Oh. I didn't mean to put you on the spot. Yeah. I have a question. Yes. Oh, which town in Wyoming is our sister city? So they're at the Wind River Reservation. So that's um, it, the Wind River Reservation. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And where that is in, in relation to... I know where it is. Yeah. Okay. Driven through the okay. area. Yeah. Thank you. So the Wind River Reservation. Mm -hmm. um, and there's been three, um, because it is a sister city to Longmont, official. Um, there have been three exchanges of students, of young people, between the two already. Oh, yes, which I don't think have been particularly well publicized. So. And there's some really great movies out there about the Wind River. Uh, area and the Arapahoes up there. Uh, um, I, I wish I could tell you. You'd have to Google that to find the movies, but um, there's some good stuff up there. Whether it's factual or not, I don't know. <laughs> Whether they took poetic license to make the movies, I don't know, but they were really good. So, there's a lot of women, uh, abuse of women. Um, I yeah. found that particularly interesting. Today, Today. Yeah. Yeah. still absolutely um, missing, right? And so there's 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 a team that is designated to focus on um, missing missing indigenous people, right? But specifically women, uh, because they don't get that attention that they would in other communities. So we learned that too. It's a girl that was in uh, Yellowstone. If anybody watches Yellowstone. Anybody here? No? Um, the, the Indian that is not an Indian, by the way, uh, Native American Indian, she was in this movie, and I think it was called Wind River. Oh, I think it was that'd be interesting to see. So the whole purpose of this was to not only allow our leadership to be their leadership, and not to, yeah, not, not just that, not to just have discussions around next steps towards an elder exchange, but to, but most importantly, experience firsthand what we would be able to, through this experience, what we would be able to offer our, our community, our senior community here um, at, at the senior center, these opportunities, right? And so that, that was the major focus, and I, I feel like that we were, we were, we were successful in that, and we had that exposure of this is what, this is the takeaways. This is, you can't read this in a book, you can't watch this on a video, you have to experience it firsthand to know, right? And I think everybody walked away with that, with that understanding uh, from this trip. She you know the, the report you gave to the Friends Board? Is it something that you could send to us? Yes, I don't intend to. You will too? Okay, yes. thank you. Appreciate I appreciate that. Note. And again, that. thank you for going with me. Yes. Representing us. Yes, it sounds exciting. Yeah. yeah, it does. Okay, any more questions? Did you guys actually stay on the reservation, or where did you actually stay? So, um, overnight. Oh, so this was a, a, a fairgrounds in Casper that they use for these races. So, their reservation oh. I found out after was two hours away. Oh. Okay. So we, we just stayed in Casper near the fairgrounds. Mm. Thank you. And where will they be coming down for the Denver event in March? I we think it's around St. Patrick's Day, sort of 16th century. And where do they hold it? So that is at the um, Denver Coliseum. I think. Okay. okay. If you've ever been, it's really exciting. And that's, so again, we're, we're looking at how, how we can incorporate these opportunities, learning opportunities right. in our programming. So we're looking to see about getting a, uh, having one of our programming options taking a group, a couple buses down to Denver Coliseum to, to experience that. Oh. Yeah. Um, if you've never been, it's really, really exciting. Um, have you ever been to the Coliseum? Everybody been to the Coliseum? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Those, so the terminal is just 
jam packed with um, benders, number one. Mm -hmm. I mean, on both sides, all the way around the entire thing, and some on the lower level as well. And I mean, there's no space in between, it's just benders. And with, with their artwork, um, you know, uh, pottery, jewelry, you name it, everything handcrafted. And then the, when you go to your seat, they have different groups come out. So um, different different tribes. They acknowledge each tribe individually. They um, they have different ceremonial dances where um, certain members of each tribe will come out to perform. <clears throat> and so it's just it's just different variations and different groups of celebration um, in, in, in the middle of the Coliseum. So it's, it's really, really cool. There's another way to say it, so it's really cool to experience. All right. Well, thank you. It's March 17th through the 19th. Oh, for 2024? Is that 2023? No. 20, no, they don't have it. Oh, I guess okay. they don't have it. It says 2023. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Yeah, I'm glad looking. you said that. Yeah, I've been looking. <laughs> but that's it's usually around that same time frame. Yeah. That sounds neat. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Appreciate both of you. Uh, now we're back to the housing update. Am I correct? Yes. Okay. Sheila and Vani. I'm afraid I do not have anything to report on this at this time. Morning, May. I honestly don't and Sheila and I haven't been able to get together, but we will make that commitment yes. by the next meeting yes. to come together and get a plan in place that we're looking at as far as what um, areas we're going to start to work in. Yeah, because I think we could see from what Amy has said that housing is maybe the very, most important yes. issue currently um, facing senior citizens. Oh, can I just add something? Um, I can talk. This is totally off the walls. I talked to um, a friend who was in somewhere other than the front range and this business called Senior Citizens, The Wise. Oh, so instead of saying seniors, The Wise, W-I-S-E, you, you may look confused. <laughs> I thought that was a absolutely unnecessary and patronizing way to treat older people. Okay, I've got it off my chest. <laughs> <laughs> Saying yes. otherwise, yes. Yes. you didn't approve of the wise, right? I did not. I mean, you may think that there it's, are some elders that may not be too wise. Exactly. <laughs> yes, and it's yeah. I mean, calling people the wise means that you can call them what you like, but if you don't treat them as you would somebody who is wise, that means absolutely nothing. Um, sorry, I can tell you disagree with me. But okay. That's what we're here for. Yeah, <laughs> elders is better than wise. Yes, yeah, exactly. I prefer that. Yeah, I just think sorry. senior citizens is, is just puts a group out there that. I don't know. Not everybody wants wants to fit into that. I, it just needs a different name. Is the way I kind of oh, look at it. And yes. I don't know. I don't know what the name is. It needs, but well, in fact, um, in a previous iteration of the council, we did discuss at some length what to call the senior centre yeah. if it wasn't the senior centre. And as you can see, it's still called the CBS. Elders how well. Yeah. yeah, and it is nationally. And it's just, <laughs> yes. I think it's kind of off-putting to some people. Um, so if you're 55 and it says senior center, you know, it's like, okay, that's, that's what that it's not, there. Yeah. yeah, and so yeah. I just, I think it's, it, nationally, I think it needs to be changed, but that's not probably going to happen. Right. But I, that's been my concern for years. Oh, yeah, well, I think. I just think it's very off-putting. Maybe move to Longmont <coughs> and thought senior center. That's for old for old people. Yeah. What yeah. names were considered? Do you remember? No. Yeah. That was a lot of talk. Right. But we did not 
come up with anything. I have a lot of thoughts about the age, starting at the age of 55 as well. I think that is archaic. I think it's passe. Um, we are aging further as a population, and I think 55 is too young. And I've seen other senior centers that don't start at 55. And that's another conversation for another time, probably, but I just wanted to bring it forward. Yeah, I agree. I agree with this. We've talked about this for a while on, on yes. the thing, and it's, it is difficult. Yeah. Maybe other municipalities have an idea. Yeah, me too. Others are, but most of them are still called the senior centers, yes. I think. Yes. If they're located within a rec center or something like that, I think it's a, it's a different situation, but a lot of people <laughs> Okay, transportation update? Oh, yes. Okay. Since Dave's wanted to make sure that I was to add something. So, what I did was I, um, I, I've had some concerns about transportation issues and seniors and all that kind of stuff since I moved here. And I did meet with a city uh, engineer just to kind of talk through some things with him. Uh, to see how off base I was and to see if any things he could be considered. So I've written down a few things here that I thought we could think about, and then I don't know where he wants to go from there. So one of the first things is the microtransit bus, which I understand has now received, <clears throat> it's either 450,000 or 475,000 on a grant. And if you remember, when Greenwald was here, they were asking for 600. So they did get that, um, which is exciting because if that comes to fruition, what I see is you being able to call and within 30 minutes you should be able to get a ride, which now you have to call via <clears throat> at least a week in advance and then maybe they're going to get a ride, maybe not. Um, the other thing is cost and I think this is something that maybe we should um, push for if the city could make it a free ride. Um, otherwise, if it, it needs to be really low. It needs to be one or two dollars, which I think is what they're looking at at this point, one or two dollars a ride um, via charge of six one way. So if you have to go to dialysis, which is three times a week, if you have to take via, that's thirty-six dollars. And if you're a lot of people that are on dialysis are also on fixed income, regardless of their age. Um, that's a tremendous hit to them. So I think as far as cost goes, I'd like to see maybe we need to advocate for this, the city to at least give this free or really a low cost on it. And the other thing is that it's going to hit all areas of town. I know now that the area of, the town, the area of town that I live in does not have bus service. So we either have to have, depend on have our cars or you call via or you know something like that in order to get around. This will cover all the areas of town. So I'm hoping that this is something that starts in 2024, but I don't know. I know they need to get some additional funding set up. But there's a couple of things I think we can advocate for. We can advocate for um, the cost. I think that that's critical to everybody. Um, okay, that was number one. Number two. I'm sure that you all know that the cross lights on Main are in now, and prior to them being in, I had talked to this, this gentleman. And it is the City of Longmont and LDDA, the Long, downtown Longmont, that provided the monies to get those in. So I think that that's great that we've got people who are actually advocating. And that is a definite safety issue. I mean, I don't like going downtown and trying to cross in the middle of the street. That's crazy. Um, and, and you can't see the people for another thing, too when you're driving or even when you're walking. Um, and I think that this has came about to a certain extent through Vision Zero. And I just thought my understanding of Vision Zero is that instead of looking at traffic flow so much, it's looking at pedestrians. And if I'm wrong about this, that's my understanding. Um, and maybe it would be kind of nice to have somebody explain Vision Zero to us. <laughs> because I know that they've got some ideas of what they're doing and if it's pedestrian minded rather than vehicles so much, what's their thinking on it? You know, are we looking at crosswalks? Are we looking at safe walking areas? What are we looking at? So 
Um, I just think that that's something kind of to look at. Um, street signs. Now this is something that really kind of um, bothers me when I'm driving and I don't know where I'm going. The street signs are not the same. So you'll be driving down the street and there'll be a sign on, way on this end of the light. And then you'll come to the next one, it'll be in the middle. A majority of the lights, you know, go across the intersection. I think that we need to get those street signs out to where when you're going down the road, you can see it. When the, when the trees are in full leaf, at the major intersections, you cannot yeah. see those signs until you get right up to them and then you're in the wrong lane. You know, so I think that's something that really needs to be looked at. And yes, I understand that not every one of those arms is as big as another one, but still, I think there's a way to get that sign over there. So that's that's something that I'm kind of thinking of. And I think they need to be the same color. Um, you know, you have one that's black and you have one that's green, and they're all hard to read anyway from a distance. But that is something that could be really easy fixed that street signage, I think. And it would be, really, everybody. Everybody that comes through town would have that. Great. Okay, street crossings. Uh, some of the lights, I think, need to be longer for pedestrians to get across. And I'm gonna give you an example of what I encountered last week when I went to the library, <clears throat> which is, came from your building. The village on Maine, which is actually called Village, uh, Village Place right now. I think it's going to be called Village on Main yeah. after the re, uh, re syndication remodel of it. Um, it's right there at Sixth and Main, and there was this, uh, there was this uh, street sign there, and I understand that. But I had been down at the library at their wonderful five bag of books for five dollars day, and I happened to see this lady in front of on the sidewalk in front of my car with her walker you know, going, heading towards the library, and I knew where she came from, because I knew her, and I thought, how did she get across that street safely? Because I don't know that the light stays, um, cross light stays uh, white for her long enough to get across. So I think this is something, and, and the engineer even said, if you see intersections and you have somebody that you know you'd like to see them get across, time it. You know, walk with them across, and if it doesn't allow them to get across safely, then we need to know this. So this is something we need to take a look at. Usually I can get across, but sometimes if you're crossing some of those big intersections over, um, you know, third, some of those big intersections, you kind of really huff it across yeah. there to get across. Just able-bodied yeah. people. Yeah. yeah, and so I think that we need to take a look at that. So that's that's something I think that we can, we can take a, a look at too. Um, and I honestly don't know when I ask this question, I don't know if every street light intersection has the blind notification on it where you can hear the little beep, you know, so Brian, no, I, mean, that's 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 I wonder if that's something that needs to be on everyone. Um, because blind people can get out and get around regardless, especially if they have someone with them or they even have a seat in my dog, I think that that's right. The other thing I asked about was diagonal crossings. There is one in Estes Park, at least one that I know of. Estes Park isn't near as big as Longmont. What's the possibility of maybe diagonal crossings? Um, you know, in a diagonal crossing goes like this, if you want to get to the other side of the street, why don't we have to go this way and this way? Why can't we go this way? So um, that is, well, I plan to see, let's put it like that. I don't know if anything's going to happen, but I think it's something that why, why don't we take a look at it? I'm sure there are places in town where that would be very advantageous for people. It would have to be a real high traffic. The reason mm -hmm. it works in Estes is because it's such I a have, high pedestrian yeah. traffic. Yeah. yeah. So Third and Main, for instance, you know, I mean, that's mm -hmm. that's a busy street, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and that might be nine, yeah, seventeen. Yeah, you've got some busy streets that just it might be something to actually look at. At that point, we'd have to be looking at longer time too. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. And people would get used to it. I mean, when the light's red, the light's red. And of course, we have a lot of people that run red lights, but anyway. Okay, so one of my really big concerns is the train horn. I don't know if the train horn bothers anybody else, but it really bothers me. And I know that they are working on that, so I think that, you know, as we are thinking about it, if you ever talk to anybody from the engineering department in the city, 
um, you know, you just might mention that well, it sure is going to be nice when we get the quiet zones, um, which I, I thought were coming in 2023, and I haven't I seen them I did, too. Yet. What happened yeah. to that? So, um, well, the year's not over. No. That's not over. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, that, that's it. And then um, the other thing in regard to seniors and getting to uh, different things, I've been asked, um, so I guess I probably need to explain that. One of the things that we do with the housing authority is that we have a shopping van or a shopping bus actually, that twice a month takes people from the facilities to shopping. And I will tell you that, as a, and I usually ride that as a volunteer. Um, there are people that go every single time and they get quite a bit of groceries. So I know that this is something that they need. However, they have asked me, <clears throat> how can we go to some of the city functions? Some of the city events that they have going on in the summertime, they close off streets. How can we get to those? And so I don't know the answer to that. I mean, I can check with Via. We just went this week shopping and I, the driver and I talked about this quite a bit as to how we could figure that out. The other thing is, is that you're talking, and it doesn't actually have to be just the housing people, that, that those are places that I know they would go, but there's other places in town where people might really like to have a ride and not worry about parking. You know, if you get you down there and pick them up in an hour, um, I think that that's something that we could really take a, a look at. And again, it needs to be a reasonable cost to get them there. Um, so I don't know what the city has as far as, I don't know what the senior center has as far as vehicles that would maybe take people around, what the cost would be and, and how that would work. I don't know whether Parks and Rec has, has anything. So I don't know what the city has. I hate to depend upon VIA when their prices keep going up. Um, because right now I will tell you that in order for us to do the shopping routes, it's $90 an hour for us to do that, which I think is expensive. How much? But $90 an hour for us to do that. So, and we do get the same van and we get the same driver for that amount of time, which is about six, seven hours. But that's a pretty significant hit, um, which the city has been nice and given us money for it, but we're gonna, that's gonna run out in 2025. How many, how many people can ride in that vehicle at a time? You can get, <clears throat> you can get 20 people in there and you can get one to two wheelchairs. Hmm. So, so it's a CDL driver too. No. Okay. It has to be more than 20. Yeah. It, 14 is the number that goes above 14 it has to have a CDL. I was trying to think how, how many we had in there yesterday, or Tuesday. To me, that there was seating for 16 in there. We didn't have 16 people in there at one time, but there you can do one or even two wheelchairs. We haven't had any wheelchairs, but boy, they, they really tap those things down. Those things aren't going to move once they've got those in there, those wheelchairs. But um, anyway, it did good. My understanding is I don't think they maybe be a does, maybe they are CDL. I don't know. I understand, I thought my understanding was that I don't know, but. Um, yes. So those um, were the things that I came up with as, as suggestions and things that I think are going on and um, we can certainly talk about it more. But I think there's areas where we can you know, advocate for some things for not just seniors, but for everybody in the community. Did you say there's a charge with the... For, yes, yeah, not for the people. The people ride free. Right. Yeah. Okay, I thought you said that. Was well, oh, for yeah. VIA, if you're going to take and go to a doctor, yes, it's six dollars one way. Oh. So it's twelve dollars um, a, a round trip ride. I think no guarantee they'll be picked up. Okay. And a lot of people who no, have insurance don't. don't realize that they have transportation through their insurance free. And that's yeah. So that's something an outreach could be done on that as well, right? Right. I've never looked into it, but I know that I've heard from people from the community of seniors that uh, Uber is quite expensive here it is. Oh, there in Long Beach yeah. compared yep. to other communities. Is there, you, do we know if there's any, why, there, why is that? Is that because we're a smaller community? I think Uber's expensive anywhere you go. Yeah. I've ridden Uber and I just think it's expensive. There's anywhere more competition in bigger cities so they can keep their costs down more, but. 
there are maybe less there are tons of drivers yeah. less drivers in long months so they can keep the cost high okay bit, yeah. yeah i paid when i was in florida going through a cruise ship i paid less here than what so many people were paying to get round trip here in long month yeah yeah. Well, you take you know you take a chance on not getting there on time. Um, and what you're what you're gonna get too when you're any questions? Let me have, let me give you a quick update from what I know about the crossing signs on Main Street. The new ones at the camera? Um yeah. not the two in the individual not mid oh okay um, <clears throat> things, but just the crossing signs at each intersection. Okay. Um, I address that myself um, back a ways. I brought it to the LDDA meeting in March, actually. They said they've been working on it. They said the city gave them a whole explanation of why they can't just switch the times, that it sets off a chain of events all the way down the street and all that sort of thing. So, however, I put in a service works request and I got one back saying, and I was looking for it, I wish I had it. It said that they were working on it and they were going to start in late 2023 throughout 2024 and start switching every intersection to longer lights. So they have it in place. The plan is in place. They just have to do it. They have to do it. But they're definitely going to do it. And I was pointing out the fact that to get across the street at the pump house, from mm -hmm. the village place to the mm -hmm. pump house, yeah. um, people had to walk with people on walkers to stop the cars when the light turned right. green right. so that they didn't so that they had enough time to get across the street. Right. So from that, from mentioning that in service works, I got a very nice reply saying, we are definitely diligently working on this and it'll be 2023 and 2024. So hopefully that's it's that's their gonna computer. be an improvement. And they did tell me that that it's their computer system and of course you know they have an old system and they have a new system. And I, I mean, I got the whole system. Yeah, exactly. Which I didn't, didn't change. I, I thought of something about yeah, the cross, the diagonal crossing, like they do in Estes Park. Mm -hmm. um, maybe that could be handled during special events. I mean, I don't see oh, that yeah. we have that much bush traffic to warrant that right now. But during special events, oh my gosh, they could have special uh, tra volunteers or traffic people for special events to do the diagonal crossing and it would solve a lot of issues when Main Street isn't closed for those, like the Christmas tree lighting I'm thinking of and you know other events like that that have happened downtown. I wonder um, if the fact that Main Street is a state highway, that must add some complexity oh yeah. to these changes. Probably, because yeah. oh yeah. it always added a complexity to closing it. Um, let me just tell you one other thing too. I know at Village Place, we decided we really wanted to kick up the Christmas activities that we, we wanted to kind of plan for everybody. So we were talking about what goes on outside of our, our building, like the museum show, like the Hearts of Longmont show, mm -hmm. you know, the barbershop um, does a big event. And we were saying, you know, the problem is transportation. Mm -hmm. You know, nobody wants to take four people in their car. I would do it in a heartbeat, but other people have concerns about the, about the, um, you know, legal. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So um, we started to look into transportation, and we are having difficulty finding a van yeah. that could take ten or fifteen people on a Sunday afternoon to go to right. Vance Brand you know, auditorium to see the Nutcracker. Yeah, and I think that's part of what this, how do we get people to these special events? You're right. Exactly. It's finding an event via roads Monday through Friday, and then it's, if they, they will sometimes do special events, um, and, you, and it's nice, then you don't have to park your car, right. you know, and you get right up there and they get you right to the door, which is fine. Um, but what do we use for, for vehicles? I don't know what long one to have. I mean, I walked through the parking lot here, and there's a big silver van out there. I don't know who that belongs to. It says Long Month Senior Services or something. What? Senior has two, 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 two yeah, yeah, recreation has two of the same a, size in this minivan. Is there any way that we could work something do, out? Are they, they available for rental? No, not for rental. Um, During Rhythm of the River, on the river when it was at Rogers Grove, 
Black Shuttle provided shuttle service, and they're a local business. I and noticed they're that. Expensive too. The, the but there was there was also was somebody else that drove a van the last year we were down there. Well, well, what I'm saying is, is for special things that could be employed. Um, but it's expensive. But that is yeah. You're talking about right that. But eight black. Yeah. Eight black. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because yeah. then we also rented uh, charter buses too to to do that at with them. Right from the parking lot to back over. and forth. Yeah. So it wouldn't be it wouldn't be feasible financially to shuttle. Yeah, do you know? I don't think so. Do you know of any place that might fulfill what we're what we're looking for to take tw ten to twenty people I, to an event? I, I think we need to have some time to to look at it and okay. just see. You know, you you mentioned Arlene. Uh, Ninety dollars an hour, right? Mm -hmm. Just to see what we could do it for. Um, because even the people I think would be willing to kick in a couple of dollars if it could get them to go into these events, right? And and I, I think if we keep it reasonable for the people, then but how would they the, transport them from their homes? Well, I mean, yeah. nobody's going to want to go around yeah, it's on the event come, day. It's got to come by by a meeting a place, right? Yeah. Yeah. Unless you were willing to, for instance, go to the different um, housing authorities where you well, pick up, you know, five or six people, right. and you'd have maybe two or three vans could go around. I mean, there's there's nine housing authorities, yeah. nine facilities. Um, it's just it's a matter of can, can we even come up with something to transport the people? Then I think we could figure out whether we could have a couple of different places that you could pick them up and. I, my immediate reaction is it's going to have to be a budget request. Oh yeah, because I, you know, we don't have the resources or the budget to to do that right now. But it could be something we looked at to request for twenty five. Twenty five. Yeah. So if we came up with an idea of what the cost would be, to took a look at that cost and said if we charged each person. This amount of money that would have cut down on it. Is there a way that we could go to the city and say, "Can you give us this amount of money? This is what it's for out of the contingency fund." Well, That's you all can called. do whatever you want. <laughs> we can't do that. I know, but we got to right. come up with something first of what's it's right. going to cost. Yeah, I, I think we certainly need to look, run some numbers, and and then you know we can come back with what our thoughts are and, and then you can decide whether you think that's a go to council kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I've asked and before, I don't just, know. It's something that bothers me is is that so many things that are offered serve such a small percentage of our senior population right. and it just seems to me we need to get in there. That right. uh, I, I would just say that if there was a lot of money to be made in this and it was gonna pay for itself, there'd be people doing it right now. And I think the challenge is that it becomes hit and miss where at first you get 30 people want to, to go. And then after a period of time, it's down to 15. And then it's down to six and there's no way to, to keep it financially moving forward. Right, right. Is, the, uh, is this something that the Friends Board might consider helping with? Uh, I, I think we need to better flush this out before we would go to them. No, no, no. I yeah. agree. Yeah. 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 Go ahead. So let, if you could give Ronnie and I the for the next month so that we can come back with information in November and kind of continue that part of the conversation then. That'd be great. Well, okay. and would, and I know that, you know, you're maybe looking at this city vehicles. Would anybody even be willing to talk to Chen about, I think that's his last name, about as part of a community situation, would you be willing to donate a certain portion of time or your vehicle to and to getting people around? I mean, it's mostly summer, but then, you know, maybe Christmas. I think what would be really, really fun, and they've asked for this, is to be able to take them around and look at Christmas lights. Yes, we're looking into that right now. Yeah. Senior fact, services, I ask, Noah has done that in his
historically. Right. Is there a plan this year to have a holiday lights night where people meet at the senior center and get on the? Not that, I'm aware. that was great when they did. But they used to do that. Yeah. Where the place it was, was great, and they, I missed yeah, that last another, year. Yeah. I mean, it was open. The senior center was open, but there were no. I mean, there wasn't much offered. Are you talking about for Longmont Lights? Mm -hmm. Okay, I think we're talking two different. Oh, yeah. what are you talking about? I I think what was being asked is a vehicle to drive people around to look at the lights oh, no. around yeah. the town. Yeah. Right. Not in this, not in this catalog, but we have That's done that before. Yeah. And sometimes the broom hop trolley. Right. That's who I'm in contact really with now. Yeah. yeah. Is to find out if, if we wanted to rent it for a night, what it would cost. Yeah. And then if we don't want to rent it, if it's too high, then could we join? Could we buy tickets for one of the nights that they do offer to the public? Um, and just yeah. could they pick us up at Village Place? And uh, they'd be able to put a lot more people too for the size of their vehicle. Right. Mm -hmm. And then they're already planning it anyway. So it wouldn't mean, you know, we need to have anything planned. It's already going on. So it looks like this year we're kind of leaning towards that, just making tickets available to people who want to buy them. I think we need to find out what the transportation would cost us so we have an idea of one, does it even sound feasible? Um, and how do we get our, our seniors out? And, yeah. Because so many of them don't have cars. Right? And the pandemic just really did a hit on a lot of them. Um, so yeah. But they love it. When we go out and we do grocery shopping and all we do is take them to the grocery store. It's just getting out and right. you know walking through the store and getting groceries. I mean, it's just the fact that they're actually getting out in the way. Interacting so, with other people. Yeah, and, and they, they do. They, they have a good time on the bus. So. Uh, let's give uh, Ronnie and Jeff an uh, opportunity to get together, and I think we should probably maybe even have an agenda for next month since the holidays are coming, folks. Yeah. So those were the things I came up with. So. Mm -hmm. okay. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, outreach. Uh, um, for uh, outreach, um, Art and I didn't have a chance to get together. I made notes. Um, when Dave and I, Dave Brenna and I got together at Red Frog to discuss outreach, and um, we had a really good conversation. Um, and I'm just gonna hit some highlights. Uh, uh, he brought me up to speed. Oh, can I ask one question first? Is there any kind of, when I joined the board, I didn't get any kind of um, indoctrination or um, documents or anything like that. Did, did you, Sheila, when you joined the board? No. Um, it, I think it would be nice for new board members to have some kind of, what would you call it, Jeff? We can get that. Uh, you want it electronically or do you want it hard binder? Oh, well, I think electronically is fine, but I, I just think we, we talked about that. He said, did you get anything? And I said, no. Okay, we can get that. But um, we used to get a folder at one time. Well, that's what he was talking about. Right, like, and uh, yeah. that like would be great on there, too. Hard I think both should be available. I should have it in my hand. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I know we have a lot of hard copy. I don't know. It might be, I think it depends on what you want. Because if you want it electronic, there might be a lot. I don't think a new board so, member would know yeah. what they want. I just yeah. think yeah. that um, just knowing what's what But well, we would be able to get a hard about. copy for her. I mean, so everybody to, wants one? Yeah. Well, just the, the new board members. I have one. You have one. Okay. Right. I have one. Sheila doesn't. Okay. Lonnie. Yep. We'll get, we'll have those. All of us. Yeah. <clears throat> so we'll go ahead and speak. Yeah. I just yeah. think it's a nice thing to, when somebody comes on the board, they have something. Mm -hmm. and, and I prefer electronic, but, um, because I don't like paper. I don't have paper anymore. I haven't holding paper in my hand, but it's on my computer. Um, so that was just one thing I wanted to mention that we talked about, um, which has nothing to do with outreach. Uh, I'm just reading the notes here. He brought up the uh, AAA Area Agency on Aging, um, the past, present, future report, but. That has been sent out to new board members. Did you guys get one of those? Well, you uh, obviously have one. 
But do you have one? Um, they are available online on the Area Agency on Aging website. It's called Past, Present, Future Report, September 2019, but it was attached to our minutes at one meeting that I've attended. So do you, would you like, Ronnie, to attach that to the minutes? Sure, if you'd like to. It's the I can look it up. If I'm the AAA. AAA. Yeah. Are, are you the only one? Yeah. Am I the only one? Yeah. It didn't okay. say it. Well, that makes it easy. One, but it's it's real easy to find. I found it okay. online. I can find it. And it's downloadable. It's up to you whether you want to attach it to every these minutes, but right. and who, who took over you're running that or who's running that group? From here? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm the representative. Okay. Oh. So you're saying you want this attached to each meetings? No, not at all. I just wondered if all the new board members were aware of that document and had it. And you're the only one that doesn't have it. So okay. yeah. So I'll she'll get her own. You don't have it. to attach it, Ronnie. Yeah, I'll get it. Okay. But if somebody new comes on board, that would be a good thing for them to have. I don't know. Um, Okay, outreach. Um, we talked about that the changes have to be incremental and start very small. Um, uh, I'm talking about incremental change for Latinos. And, um, and then we talked about what is our charge, meaning what, what should we provide and we put, and I'm not sure what this means, find one or two activities to send Latino to, to the Latino community. Um, I'm not sure what that means. Uh, Carmen at the city, what is her last name? That's the expert on, Lati on the Latino Ramirez. population. Yeah. What's her last name? Ramirez. 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 And she is available how? She's in what department? She's in shared services. She is the director of community and neighborhood resources. Oh, okay. and she has she's supposed to us. She has yes. yeah yes yeah, she's community and she's, neighborhood resources. She's the Carmen that Ronnie was referring to with the uh, yeah neighborhood resources. So I would just call this. We would just call the city to get her, get in touch with her. You might also want to reach out to Veronica Garcia here. Oh, okay. Because we, she is, she would know more about this than we're already doing for like an outreach and programs. To Veronica. Um, what's Veronica's house? Garcia. And the card is probably easier to email her. Garcia via email. Did you get all this art? And she's right here on your You're, on your, you're the uh, chief. <laughs> no, I mean, she's right here on your handout for her email. Oh, okay. On handout. Okay. And she's with us. And then um Lashley Street Center. Um, I brought up I don't know if I brought this up here before, but I thought it would be an excellent community center for Latinos. The senior center, annex, community center. It doesn't just have to be seniors, but a community center for Latinos on the east side of town. So, I think they would be more apt to use something like that, some people, than to come here. I mean, referring to seniors. Uh, that was one thing we talked about. What were you going to say? So what you're saying is a separate senior center for Latinos and then this, this one. I thought not, not separate, but like um, just catering to their needs because I have heard on the short time, time I've been on the board that we are made, that some seniors are not apt to come here. But if they're on, if there's something on their side of town, they may find out more information about the senior services and the programs available, and they could have some programs in Spanish at a location there. I, it's just something that, that I thought would be beneficial for the population. 
So you're saying either a community, not necessarily a senior center, but a community maybe, center? Maybe a combined. Right. Right. So senior services shares the use of that facility. So shares. Se yeah. Senior services could not go in and completely con convert that. Uh, I believe it's Monday and Wednesday senior services has access to do programming. It's Monday or Wednesday or Tuesday. Thursday. Already. Yeah. I would yeah. love to see the schedule of programming for that building because I don't see cars well, there I, ever. I would agree with yeah. that. Ever. No. And so I think that so needs to be revisited. Yep. Uh, actually, actually, so it needs to get out. Over the 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 uh, Heritage Middle School? Yeah. yeah. Okay. We're, we're actually reevaluating re that current. Good. For future programming. Good. The, the other issue with that is that there was money put to remodel that facility that requires that youth programming takes place there. So senior services cannot take over. Well, it requires it, but if they're not using it. It doesn't matter. The money was there, it has to has to be available. Was it a donation to the property? No, it was a, it was a federal or state okay. marijuana money. So it's a priority then, is that it, it, a priority? It, yes, it has to be, based guess, on the remodel of that building. I guess my, and maybe I'm looking at this differently, but I just thought that we were trying to do a diversity, equity, inclusion thing, and, and I don't see this as an inclusion if we're, and granted I know that they need, they need it in their own language and everything, but um, it just seems like we're not, it is not an inclusion thing. I don't know, maybe I, if you're I, right. I, I think I agree with you that to be inclusive, they need to, we need to have people come here but well, I think, to go there. yeah, I mean, and I think that's what Beth is suggesting is going there is at Lashley Street Station because that's closer to to that neighborhood, and so I think that's a legitimate thing. It just can't be. What do they say about percentage of use? What do they say? I mean, what are the specifics of that? I don't. I just know enough I think to be we need dangerous. To research that. So who 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 do we find out? Christina will have that information. <laughs> Christina? Yeah. Check her. Who is that? Who's Christina? She's Ronnie's boss. She's the director of human services, which senior services is a part of. Could we get together with her about that? Have you gotten together with her about that? You haven't had a need to get together about that. That's about your question. question of usage there. So we, we have had some discussion around it. And um, my understanding is, as Jeff was mentioning, he, because of how funds were tied to the renovation, um, it was parsed out. So uh, CYF, Children and Family, has, I believe it's from 3 p.m. to 8 p.m. Every single night, Monday through Friday, we have, it's Tuesday, Thursday, I believe, like 8 to 3 p.m. Um, and then Recreation has those other days. What's Christina's last name? Pacheco. P-A-C-H-E-C-O. E-C-O. And she is human director of human services director of human services and we can put that on the agenda and give a whole history of the lashley street station would it be okay if i just met with her personally oh no you can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> i mean i you know i i would just i'd be really interested in how it's parsed out but as for our days that we're designated to the senior to senior services, we were, we're evaluating programming and how we're getting how we can increase that. Um, and you have Monday, Wednesday from what to what? Tuesday, Thursdays, and I believe it's like. Oh, eight, you have Tuesday, Thursday. Yeah, it's Tuesday, Thursday at from like eight to three. I yeah. Believe. Yeah. Eight to three. Okay. Yeah. Recreation has it on Friday after five and on weekends if people want to reserve that for events. And have they used it, do you know? And yes. It is. It That building has lots of capacity. We were just getting it, you know, to a point and then COVID hit and it really kind of messed everything up. And there's still opportunity program on the side of our designated dates and times if um, it works with recreation. So this is not using it? it right. right, so hey, we were thinking about this. Right. And of course, they'd have priority because it's their designated days. 
if they're not programming right. And what, we've done the same as well. Yeah, if you're interested in what kind of programs recreation would use that for from Friday on and weekends. It's only reservation for rentals. And nobody else does that, so that's how recreation For rentals? Happens. Yes. For anybody? Anybody. Over the summer. So if, could that be eliminated because you have other facilities that can be used for rental? Not necessarily, because it, it, the capacity is available because generally programming for both youth and for senior services takes place Monday through Friday. That, that's been the history of that. So recreation offered to manage the rentals as another way to expand the usage of, of that facility. Well, I have a designated days example. So over the summer, Isaac, there's construction on Isaac Walton where the um, recreation had some programs going out of in the summertime. We relocated over to um, Lashley because of- For no reason, by the way. Right. <laughs> because they didn't do it. Right. right. <laughs> so Isaac Walton soon, we've been saying that for 18 months now, will have some impacts because the Corps of Engineers are coming in to do the work on the dike there by the river and the pond. And so we were preparing based on the dates we'd been given before, and we were moving some of the Isaac Wall things over to Lashley Street Station. Well, Corps we never know. So we keep doing these starts and stops with that, but I believe the Corps is out to bid right now and that, uh, that project should start late this year or early next year, which would then again require us to move some things to last year. So let me ask you this, which doesn't really have a lot to do with this, but with the open enrollment coming up now, are you guys looking at putting people over there at Lashley and serving the Hispanic community over there? Because I think they probably don't know a whole lot about not specific that. open enrollment for Medicare. Oh, Medicare. Yeah. no, generally not. So there's many things that happen. So the city owns the building. We will lose access to our own building for um, two to three weeks when it's election time. County comes in to actually change the locks of the building, and then use that for their um, basis for ballots. And it's all a security thing. So no one else, including the city, can use that. Do they rent that from the city? No. They take it Is there the another day. option for them? Uh, apparently not, because we've argued that that didn't really work for us. During COVID, it made total sense. Yeah, it, it, right. it worked out well. but. Now that they they there is something in their powers that allow them to take over the building, um, so they it's will a huge be, building at the hub for that use too, uh, yeah. and it's open. It's not used at night. Yeah. Yeah. Can, I just, can I suggest? I'm sorry. Anyway, yeah. 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 I was going to say if we move on and if there was, okay. we will we will least. have Lashley Street Station on the agenda. I'm not saying you can't meet with Christina, yeah. uh, but we'll have that for the, the greater good, if you will. Yeah, okay. okay. That sounds good to me. A okay. um, uh, couple other things uh, related to this. Um, I wasn't able to get together with Art to talk about uh, who can lead us in providing what Latinos want, and that's something that Art, you need to maybe generate. Um, what are their top priorities? Uh, Brandy and Ronnie, um, what is your take on what the three top critical areas of serving senior Latinos would be? Is what one, one thing we want to get together with you two and find out um, in the future? <laughs> uh, just to give you a heads up on that. And, the, and Oh, I'm just going to read this because I'm not really sure. The board wants to make recommendations that benefit the senior community. Harold, re Harold Dominguez receives these and he goes to council. Harold has power 
um, about what goes up and back down again. Annual report is critical. We need to go, when we do our annual report as a board, that's critical. We need to go a step further in creating equity and senior services delivery and re-examine what is delivered and who is being served. Is this truly the city council mission as is stated in their vision statement? We have a lot of questions about that and we can bring that up again. Um, incremental changes is what Carmen said uh, when she was with us. Outreach to the Hispanic, um, regarding outreach to the Hispanic community. I already kind of mentioned that. And we talked about, um, since Dave isn't, David isn't here to share with us today, we talked about reducing our goals as a board to definable, measurable, specific, and able to be implemented goals. Um, because you know we're doing these three uh, these three different areas we're doing research on those but we just we can't do everything we have to really reduce that and I just wanted to bring that up so we can be thinking about that um, and I think oh and the other thing is some people use the term Hispanic some people learn to use the term Latino Latinx, I mean, there's so many different things going around. My understanding and my research show that Latinx, Latinx, Latinx is the most widely used in the US. Latinx is a gender, gender neutral or non-binary alternative to Latino. That said, with the senior population, I think Hispanic is still the most accepted Hispanic and, and Latino both and, are, yeah. are no, and Latino, Latino, which is, Latino, which is male, Latino. right? And Latina, which is female. And I just think we need to talk have a discussion about how we refer to um, that population at some point in time. And, and usually when you're talking about the Latino population, I mean if you're talking in general yeah, Latino covers a male, male yeah. and female both. For, for the community. Right. Yes. Okay. But, uh, I mean, if you're referring to them, of course, it's Latina, but uh, Latino in general speaking, if you give a report on the Latino community, not the Latino, Latino community, you know. That's and, just and they're not using the word Latinx, which includes... I, I mean, they're using it, sure. They're, they're just using it, but okay. it depends on who it is and what they're going Their to use. Their age group, probably. Yeah, it could be. Uh, okay, that's it. Well, one of, uh, you know, one of the things that I've done is I, I've done some talking to some people in the community, and one of the things is, uh, and it's going to be a difficult thing because it's going to involve money, of course, unless we can get somebody, you know, from what I'm hearing, the senior centers, they're, they're booked. I mean, they're, they're, the, the staff is busy, and, and they don't have that. But, you know, if we can uh, have some kind of like a calling tree or we invite, in other words, if we get 10 people to an, to an activity, get their names, phone numbers, or address, whatever, and then start calling these people every time there's activities, you know, until we can, and invite, ask them to invite somebody else to come with them, to hopefully in, in, increase the activities here at the, at the center. Are, uh, are, sorry, are you talking about with Latino programming? Yes. So we actually do that. Um, we have a culture, we have volunteers who call Oh, you so do. It's working great. Well, yeah. good. That's that's oh, what that's, uh, that, yeah. that's good to hear, mm -hmm. and uh, continue with that. Uh, one of the things is uh, I talked to somebody about possibly uh, getting on the board, and uh, she told me she was considering doing it, and she is one of the people I think that is involved in in calling and says would like to get more involved on that if she gets on the board here. Uh, uh, so Josefa. Gonzalez, what's yeah. her? I forget what her last yeah. name is. Yeah. But I invited her to come to the board, but I didn't get a call back from her. Uh, and then the other thing we talked about is just trying to get as many, uh, you know, s somehow set up a uh, get an appointed meeting uh, with some people from the uh, Hispanic community and seeing if we can talk to them as a group because talking individually is difficult. 
But if we can try to get a group uh, meeting together and talk about some of the needs uh, or, or some of the wants, I should say, uh, you know, that would that'd be a good thing to, that we can do. Uh, and of course, uh, that, that includes, in, uh, you know, increasing some of the activities that we have. Now, the information I have is some of the activities that we have that are uh, attended by the Spanish uh, speaking community is is a fair representation. I, am I clear on that? You know, I've, I've heard that they're, they're getting a good turnout for yeah. these all these activities that we do have at this time, and hopefully we can continue with that, expand on that, and uh, get more people involved with that. So that's one of the things I wanted to. Just say. Okay, can uh, manage the report? Yeah. So, um, and, uh, so I, I just want to say that we can only have fifteen minutes. Yes, yeah, I'll be clear. That's why I always, that's why I always start with. Does any just everyone's had my report in advance? Does anybody have any questions? Right. I'll hit on a couple key things, and if not. Um, uh, we've been approved to hire uh, another senior recreation programmer for January 2024, so that will expand our, our, our programming team. Um, again, addressing some of those concerns that we had when I first started and um, just continuing to, to grow in that grow that team in that, in that space and allowing us to program. That's a full-time person? So, yes. Great. It will be in a, one FTE. Um, we're currently, so we, we conducted another a survey here at the Senior Center. Um, just to kind of focus more on our, our, our age demographics and see who we're serving and at, at what capacity. And this will just, we, 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 we sent out this survey by email, by, um, by mail, <laughs> physical mail, and in-person options as well for them. So um, we, last I checked, and this was early in that week that we were collecting um, these, these surveys, we at that point had over 400, I believe it was at that time. That was only Tuesday, not Tuesday. So this information, we're gonna kind of break it down next week. It's just gonna help us give a better idea again of who, who we're serving at what capacity, who's accessing our resources, um, and um, and who, who's coming to us for what. So that'll allow us to just take that information, start examining it, breaking it down to make future decisions of um, areas of focus so be more intentional and whether it be programming resources we're offering whether it be so um, how soon might you have that information we meet next thursday so, so do you think you have a report for the next November meeting then? yes so okay. we'll whatever information we have uh, from that meeting into our our next four meeting okay so uh we hosted senior law day here over over the weekend on saturday um we had over 100 participants and in, uh, in attendance, and it was just a great opportunity for our community to learn about various topics. I listed a few of them. I'll, I'll share a few of them um, verbally. Uh, serving as a, I'm sorry, estate planning for peace of mind, uh, strengthening supports, addressing financial exploitation, neglect, and abuse later in life. How to pick a lawyer, tips and resources for trying to figure out the right attorney and client. Uh, client fit. So there's nine total different options that we provided, but again, it's just opportunities for our, for our community to participate in these classes and learn more about these, these areas. Um, our, again, our programming team, we're, we're at full capacity uh, for once uh, since I've been here. <laughs> so uh, it's a great feeling. We are, our team hit the ground and running. You had an opportunity to meet Amy Hodge and Valerie Rodriguez at our last board meeting, who were just hired at that point. I realize that Ariana here, we have not had a chance to introduce her to our advisory board. Uh, she's, she's, she's our therapeutic innovation coordinator here and splits half time here with us here at the Senior Center and half with recreation. So I wanted to turn it over to Ariana and then a chance for you to ask her any questions and a chance for her to share uh, her background. Yeah, so I have been with the city since May, but the first four months I was exclusively at rec during the summer because we have camp and a lot of stuff going on. So I've been up here at the Senior Center for probably about two months. Um, I have my master's degree in recreational therapy and I come from a background of nonprofit. So working for the city has been a little bit of a learning curve, but I'm figuring it out as we go. And luckily I have great guidance with Ronnie over here and 
been over at recreation. Um, and yeah, I'm just really excited to get some program started. So my idea is to do some more uh, adaptive specialized programming for people, whether it's like physical disabilities, just different types of impairments. It doesn't even have to be a disability or even um, just getting out and recreating safely and with intent and purpose behind the activities. So that is what I am here to do. Great. Yeah. Welcome. welcome. Thank you. Thank Feel free you. to. So my office down by the offices is the first one. I share an office with Terry. Calvin, but feel free to hop in, ask questions, give recommendations, get to know me. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions, let me know. You live here in Lombok? I do, Great. yeah. Yes. And I have to say that Marianna <clears throat> and Moni did a great duo at the trip. Just oh yes, we were emceeing. They even had tie-dye t-shirts. <laughs> that we handmade. Handmade tie dye t shirt. Considering you were just on board and yeah. you really yeah. hadn't done it before, it was it was very entertaining and it went very efficiently. Very entertaining yeah. with, with horny jokes. We had a lot of those. Oh, I'm a <laughs> so horny joke person. I love them. Yeah, we call them dad jokes. Dad right? jokes. Dad dad jokes. Yeah. Yeah. And it was a good time. Thank you, Sheila. It was, it yeah. was a good time. Um, you don't care, Sharon, where you. Where, where you moved here from? Oh yeah, so I moved here from New Hampshire. I'm originally from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, go Steelers. Um, and then I did my grad school up in New Hampshire and I was there for probably about all of COVID, so three, four years. And then I moved from New Hampshire to Longmont for this job specifically. So okay. I didn't just happen to end up here. I strategically picked this job, picked this location, um, so yeah, I'm very invested in being here. I have two older brothers, which makes me very competitive. <laughs> um, and I live here in Lockmont with my partner and our three dogs. So if you ever see me walking around, I'll be with two well-behaved dogs and one menace. <laughs> it's a little one. It's always a little one, right? Yeah. And how did you hear about the position? Online. Online. I was just, I, I knew I wanted to come to Colorado, so I was looking at CPRA, which is Colorado Parks and Recreation Association. And I was also just, I found this job on the city website. I was just searching city to city and found it that way. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate you coming and yeah, thanks. welcome. And Good. We may have you here again soon. Yeah. We, we interviewed Ariana um, um, on Zoom. Yeah. And right. she, she, she made it a very easy decision for, for us. As which well. I was nervous so. about. I feel like it's hard to. <laughs> With the computer screen, it's just different, but yeah, it went great. Um, yeah, so I know Amy, Val, and I are really, ex and Terry are really excited to get this go planned and just make some good changes. Very excited for this group. They have yeah. great ideas, great suggestions, the way they collaborate together. Um, they all bring different strengths and are open to new ideas and suggestions and supporting one another. So. Very excited for this team and a uh, complete team and excited for them to bring on an additional uh, teammate in 2024. So, And great, I'm excited because we all have similar experiences, but different experiences too. So some situations we can banter back and forth and then other times it's like, oh, Val's the expert in this, you take it and run. So we've only been together for a month, but we already work very well together and it's just very natural and fluid, which makes it more exciting to, you know, come to work and try and expand on these programs and just serve the community, which we're all very dedicated to. Anytime we have a conversation, it always comes back to what do the community members want or what do they need from us is where we always come back. So I'd like to believe that you guys are in excellent hands. Um, and we're just all, we're all just pumped to be here. So yeah. A lot of excitement coming from this group. Yeah. How nice uh, for you, Ronnie. It feels great. It feels fantastic. <laughs> yeah. And as I mentioned before, we're going to be very intentional with our hiring process. We're not going to speed anything up just to fill voids or vacancies. We're going to find the right group of people, and we, we did that. Yes. So good, job. Excited. Yeah. good job. Good job. Nice. Good job. Nice. Good. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Of course. Have a wonderful meeting. Thank you, everyone around. Nice Thank to meet you. you. Thank you. Yes. You too. Uh, Marcia's not here. I, I do. I, I want to still. Two minutes of her time. 
So we need two people on the board to help us with interviews uh, for upcoming board members. If you're a candidate, you probably can't be uh, interviewing, but would two people be willing to do that? And uh, I got an email back that we need to do that uh, before December 1st. So we've got some time. My, I would be happy to say, uh, do that, but I'm going to be gone. In fact, I was going to bring that up pretty soon. That uh, I'm not. I'm going to, not going to be here for the November meeting. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be gone from the 23rd of this month to the 5th of, of November. So I don't know if that's going to work or not. So I I think it would. Okay, if it works. Uh, you be okay to yeah. do that? Well, depending on what I have that day. Right. Yeah, yeah we, and we would certainly schedule it uh, at a time that works for both of you, Ronnie and I, and the candidates. Sounds great. Okay. And it's true, so we have our do we know at this line. point how many candidates, I mean, how many applications? Um, I looked yesterday and I can't remember the number. But there are some. There are. Okay. And we have one more coming. Yeah. Okay. okay. Anything else, Jeff? No. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. The area agent uh, agency on aging. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. Um, well, I went to my first meeting, and uh, and Arlene did a great job of co-chairing it. <laughs> Um, they talked about a lot of things as far as what's coming up in the legislature and what their focus is. It was a very informational meeting. It was, there was a lot that they discussed. Um, and basically, I just got lay of the land and kind of understood a little understanding of what it was about. And I was rather intimidated because everybody had degrees in this and degrees in that, all relating to human services and seniors and stuff. And I was like, I've worked in business for 40 years, but um, it gave me a focus on what I can do to, uh, I can bring to the group and to back to us um, as far as, you know, what their plans are moving forward and how I can fit into that for Longmont, you know, to bring the information back. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, is there anything else you can think of? The only thing I wanted to mention is that it's the time of the year that the uh, Area Agency on Aging gets an opportunity to speak to a commissioner, and it was Commissioner Stoltzman who was there. So we presented to her what our, our goals and our, you know, for the future, and then she, talk to us about what the Boulder County Commissioner's goals are for the next year. So it was really a good meeting, in, including with her. So I thought that was full of information. Yeah, she's, for being new, she's very, very good. Very good. And she could even say what, what could be possible and what couldn't. Yeah. You know, she was, very clear on some things and saying, you know what, that's not really going to be in the plan, but uh, for now, but you know, this is instead, or we're going to do this, or you know, if you want to continue to present it, you know, as you move along, don't forget about it. But right now, that probably isn't going to be on anybody's radar type of thing. So it was good. It was very informative. What is your name again? Stoltzman. Stoltzman. And is that, uh, they meet monthly? Yes. Okay. Our next meeting is Friday in Allen's Park. Yes. All right. Friends so, board? I'm sorry. Does anybody else have any more questions? I'm trying to rush this. Yeah. Okay. One thing before I give a brief report. Um, the, remember the, the Heat Watch program? Um, I, I participated in when they measured the heat, surface heat around the right. city. Um, evidently that the results of that should be disseminated within two weeks. So, so I hope before the end of the month. I mean, I don't have any input into that, but so I, I think that would be very interesting to find out yeah. the hot spots. Okay. 
and the cooler spots. So, okay. okay. And the friends, briefly. Um, we talked about the last resorts payments that um, friends pay, which if you're not familiar with it's people that have nowhere else to turn for, for problems, for financial problems. And these can range from eyeglasses to rent or moving or similar health issues. Um, and Brandy did mention that the Fraser grants that we get, they apply for every year. They were very impressed with what the senior center did because it was so detailed and expansive. And I said, apply next year again, because if you don't use the whole grant for one year, that's it, you don't, uh, you don't get it the next year. How was that again? Did they get it this year? Um, they had it last if year. They don't use, if if you the don't, user doesn't yeah. use all the money they've had, they, 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 they can't apply yes. again. So evidently that's a standard for grants. And they will reapply. They urge yes. them to reapply. Okay, good. Um, the, um, yeah, we talked to Amy and um, Val again, as we did last time. Um, and they gave a presentation on their position and their future plans here. Um, Ruth led a discussion about registration procedures because um, that's sometimes not very easy for people to, um, to understand, particularly online. So I don't think there was anything, any resolution on that, but it was agreed that that, that is still a problem. Um, Linda explained that there are tax implications if you make donations through your R&D or through your IRA, that um, people are not, I, I certainly wasn't aware of it and she gave a very detailed description and I still don't understand exactly what it means, but she, she suggested that people talk to their tax accountant to understand how and where they should give donations, especially to the senior center. So there's a benefit? There's yes, a tax benefit? there's a tax benefit you can do it a certain way, and okay. it's basically through your R&D. Mm -hmm. um, then there was talk about contacting banks who have an obligation to give um, donations. I don't know what the percentage is. To the community? To the community, yes. And so a couple of the members of the Friends Board are working through that, contacting banks and selling them on the idea of donating to the Friends and subsequently to the Senior Centre. And then Ronnie Maines and Sheila Cromwell and both gave reports on their trip to um, to Casper. And it's twelve o'clock. Are any questions on what the friends discussed? Okay, it's after twelve. Is it okay to continue here, or can we, can we do another five to ten minutes? Your okay. boss. Okay, sustainability. So I, Dave emailed me. Um, they did not meet last month, so there's nothing to report. Oh, okay, that's easy. <laughs> yeah, and engaging caring communities. Perfect. Because that. What's that one? I don't know. I've never seen that. I've never heard that. I don't know. I haven't. Well, where'd you get that, Ryan? Right? <laughs> 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 I mean, it's in the. Sounds really good. I'd love to see who that is. It's on my head. I can't. Yeah. Uh, it seemed know. like it's been a while since somebody was that, that, that they haven't been meeting. Right. Is, it, is that an organization? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, city. Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. We, yeah. Engaging. Caring communities. Engaging. Okay. Uh, Dave said that at his next meeting, he's going to be inviting Linda Fetterman to attend. Mm -hmm. uh, again, I won't be here, but I was hoping that. Uh, Josefa goes by a different name. Pina. Pina. It's 
I don't know, next name or something like that. And, uh, so she's, I'm gonna try to get her to attend if she feels okay attending. Uh, Who is Linda Fetterman? She's the president, president of the Friends. Friends. Oh, President okay. of the what? Friends, okay. okay. So, anything else that uh, needs to be shared? Any new business? Well, one thing I would like to say is that I'm, I'm going to compliment Ronnie particularly and Jeff to some extent too about the hiring that we've experienced oh, because okay. it was, as everybody knows, it's a lot of, I don't want to say discord, but upset and rumors and, you know, what's happening to the senior centre. Mm -hmm. And I think it's wonderful to see it on a, a good, steady course now. So kudos all around. Yeah, sure. so thank you and the staff for all you're doing. Mm -hmm. Jeff, we appreciate you coming and uh, thanks yes. for being on that too. It's I, I enjoy this meeting. It's it's always <laughs> very good. And it's great the information you can give us. <laughs> so we clear things up. Right. Yes. We start going with ideas right. and stuff. You can yes. kind of clear it so what's yeah. possible and what's not. Right. So that's always good. You know, I have something I want to share with you afterwards if you have a minute. Yes. Okay. I just want to say something real quick too. Um, we have the volunteers from the senior center come and speak to our um, village place monthly meeting, and they were terrific. They really gave a lot of information. They um, answered a lot of questions people had. You know, I'm surprised that a place like Village Place doesn't know more about the senior center. And so we're doing well. Yeah, we're doing what we're we right can to bring in more information all the time. Um, our coffee and conversations, which is run by LHA, this this past time was about the senior center and what was available and things like that. So the more information we're putting out to all the residents, the more they're saying, "Wow, I didn't know that. I didn't realize mm -hmm. that. All that stuff." Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, I just want to say the volunteers again helped. You know, answer questions and let people know what's available to them if they want to make an appointment or just come to the center, talk to people, that sort of thing. So they did a very good job. Appreciate the feedback. I'll share it out. And they're a very passionate group. So. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else? Uh, one quick question is what exactly is our, our, our vans being used for? Or the senior vans? Our vans for, for all of our day trips. For what? For all of our trips. Okay. And that pretty much keeps them busy. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's how we get around. So all those fun things we plan, that's, that's how we get there. Unless it's the big thing we need to get coach uh, vehicle, but um, that's 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 our means of transportation. Could they ever start a rental? You know, make it available to the city or, or, with those vans. Uh, like I something would they would say ever do. probably not. Right. Okay. Do they pick people up and bring them to the center and take them home or no? No, they would say everything's out of our central location. So everybody has to be here on their own. Yeah. But you are moving the start and end location to Lashley, right? At um, some point? Right. And we're, and we're, we're, yes, we're the, uh, planning that for any, any trips that we're having will be at Lashley Station. The pickups and drop offs? Yeah. Oh, well, that's oh, nice. Yeah, Parking is nice. better? Yeah. Oh, and, yeah. and it, Frees up the parking here where you know, people are mm -hmm. gone eight hours and a lot of time. Yes, that's an excellent yeah. great, that's, that's Ronnie's. Good job, oh, Ronnie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I met, I met uh, Donnie, was the name, the driver. Yes, the name was and he's really, really excited. Another great hire. Yeah, yeah. so it sounds like a great individual. Yeah. Yeah. So is a lot um, going. Yeah. What was the chalk? Which I'm still with us, yes. still? Yeah. Okay, any other will, items? I will be going with the next board meeting as well. Uh, so it's sure. going to be two of us. It's just canceled. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I don't think we've canceled any of it. Yeah. We have to, and it's something we can do. I don't know. It's up to, right. uh, to the board, I guess. And I don't know where it falls in, in uh, line with your plans or your plans. If there's any reports that you need to send to me before you leave, or before I send that email out, please just send out. Uh, I'm sure. Is uh, you three plan on attending? I do. I do. And uh, and Dave probably. So will that 
meet the norm. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. Unless somebody's got COVID or something. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That it. Move to adjourn. Yes. Okay. Second. Second. And I'm gonna go get my COVID shot since Dave got it.